Start here, Star Citizen. This is a quick Star Citizen tutorial explaining how to get an account, ship, game package, and then how to jump into the verse for new players. Star Citizen will be an open world sandbox space sim MMO, combining first person shooter elements, ship combat, massive multi crew, capital ships, planetary exploration, economy, industry, and much, much more. However, Star Citizen is in an open development alpha phase, meaning the game is literally being built as you are testing it. Gameplay is more restricted, but your input helps shape the future of the game. Star Citizen is now on a quarterly release schedule as well, so you'll have 3.1 at the end of March, 3.2 at the end of June, 3.3 at the end of September, and 3.4 at the end of December. All with extra tangible gameplay and features. Creating an account. So first you'll want to create an account. Now you can do this by going to robertspaceindustries.com forward slash enlist, or via my link boardgamer.co.uk forward slash enlist. This will automatically populate the page with a referral code giving you 5,000 UEC which is the in-game currency for free as well as someone in my community some perks for recruiting. If you have a friend that has Star Citizen that you want to give that perk to then put their referral code here instead. A couple of notes your login ID is only known by you and customer support so treat it almost like a second password when you put your login ID in and it can't be the same as your handle or moniker and your handle and community moniker are what are shown in game or on the Spectrum forums, um, so I suggest you make both your handle and your moniker the same, but your login ID, something you'll remember, but different to those two. A game package, so you'll actually need a game package which are $45. After you've enlisted, click on play or fly now to get to the ship package page. And you have some choices here, you can have an Aurora MR or a Mustang Alpha. Now I say some choices, both packages are $45, but the Mustang Alpha for me is a clear winner. It's getting a reward Work, so it's getting updated with the latest kind of looks and uh, some changes and some modeling rework at the moment. It's worth $5 more as well if you decided to upgrade it later. And you can do most of the things that you could do with the Aurora MR. It can't equip missiles though, but the ship is faster and doesn't look like a brick, which for me is just better. There are a few other game packages available too, but you can upgrade your ship later if you wanted to, though everything will be available in game, so you don't have to spend any other real money other than buying a game package to start with. If you are looking for a small upgrade though, I do recommend the $20 extra to grab a Avenger Titan from a Mustang Alpha. The Avenger Titan is a solid or round ship, but is pretty much better at everything than the standard Aurora or Alpha that you can get. Uh, but that's something, you, again, as I said, you can decide on later if you're really in love with the game. At this time, as well, you can also grab Squadron 42 as a $15 add-on. Squadron 42 is that single-player campaign of Star Citizen and is a AAA game in its own right. It's connected to the Persistent Universe and multiplayer, however, allowing you some perks for playing through the campaign on your account. Grab it if you think you're you are going to be playing Squadron 42. If you like the idea of it, great. If you don't, then leave it. Next, you want to grab the downloader and install the game. You can get this via robertspaceindustries.com forward slash download. Grab the launcher by clicking the download installer button, run it and install it to an SSD if possible. Run the launcher and download the game. The game is currently around 38 gig after it's been downloaded and unpacked onto your hard drive. You can then launch the game via that launcher just by clicking launch and then bam, you're in the game. Game. Star Citizen's menu system has received a facelift and it's worth taking a couple of seconds to get a bit used to the new layout. Options as well, we have graphics options and some other options that you might want to turn on and off. Have a quick look around. The hint system is pretty good, it actually gives you contextual hints. Uh, the graphics stuff, there's options now. Uh, I prefer to go into full screen windowed mode as it seems to um, run more stably for me, um, but check out all the different settings and put in exactly what you want. Also, there are keybind changings. Now, I hate keybind changings, and you can see them all here, but um, I always like to go into advanced controls customization, either totally customize my own controls, or go into control profiles and just set keyboard advanced, which will basically set them back to what they were, plus there's obviously some new keys as well, which we will go over in this guide. But once you are ready, 
Um, you can choose whether you want to go into the universe, Star Marine and Arena Commander. Now, Star Marine and Arena Commander have been updated with all the new mechanics, with Item System 2.0 for all the ships, with the new weapons and uh, new flight model, all that sort of jazz as well. So they benefit from the same improvements, as well as some map, map updates and that sort of stuff that the Persistent Universe has. But for this purpose, for this quick start guide, we're going to jump straight into the Persistent Universe, as I suspect that's what most people want to see. Just select Crusader, and then you can go to region best, or you can select uh, the region that is closest to you. I'm in the UK, so I'm going to go for the EU, even though Brexit, you know. It can take a while to load. If you've installed Star Citizen on an SSD, preferably a fast SSD, you should have much quicker loading times, or at least better loading times. Uh, the game is around 39 gigs at the moment, um, which probably should have said that when you were installing it earlier, but now you know. Um, the first thing you're going to notice is that obviously you wake up in Port Alisar like you used to. Um, you now interact st with stuff with the F key. You hold F for inner thought uh, and then um, you can contextually click, left click to open doors and that sort of stuff. So um, hold F and then select the option you want and left click on it. We will go downstairs and we should do some more of the inner thoughty system. I'm going to go spawn a ship as that's probably the first thing you'll want to do. So these are the new ship spawn terminals. You can literally go up to these. You hold F again. That brings up the inner thought menu again. Left click to use. You can go through all of the ships that you currently own uh, or that are stored in that particular location. Um, ships are persistent in locations. So if I've got my ship um, at Port Olisar, I don't also technically have it at Brimhex. Now, for the PTU, stuff gets changed around. They move stuff around for testing. They allow you to spawn certain things in certain places for certain patches. So just be aware of that. Um, it will tell you um, how many crew um, that certain things can take as well, which I didn't actually notice before. But you can select a ship and then retrieve it. We're going to retrieve the Cutlass Black, assuming that it hasn't been destroyed recently. And you literally just click on retrieve. Now, if my ship had been destroyed or there is an issue with my ship, like doors not spawning, I'll click on claim and then I'll file a claim. I could technically file a claim now, but I don't want to because my ship is in perfect health. Uh, and then you can pay a little bit of extra money if you want to expedite it. So rather than having to wait a little bit of time to get it, um, you can reduce that time even further by paying a little bit extra Alpha UEC. Alpha UEC is what you'll be earning in the PTU and even when 3.0 goes live. It is the test currency for when the game goes fully live eventually. Uh, but I will retrieve this. Pay attention to where your vehicle um, is going to be delivered. A2. So I can go back off from the terminal and I can look at the landing pad boards to work out what A2 is. It is down here. So I will go travel to my ship. Again, with opening and closing doors and ramps, it is just go up to them, inner thought, um, hold F, and then you'll get a, a prompt to left click or interact. Just select with the mouse what thing you want to actually do, uh, and then left click to actually do it. Um, obviously, when this ramps up, the way I'm supposed to interact with it is using this button panel. So if you're confused on what to use to open a door or a lift or an elevator or get into a cockpit, then have a quick look around and see if there's a button or terminal or switch you're supposed to interact with. With the Cutlass Black, I'm going to use the front seat, which is the main pilot seat rather than the co-pilot seat. I'm going to press T to bring up my flashlight as well. Um, turn on, just toggle that on and off with T. Then I hold F again, enter pilot seat. Now, when you get into a ship now, there is no instant flight ready mode. You will have to flight ready it yourself. Now, you hold F and you look around for flight ready. Normally, it's towards the stick and your crotch. Um, so you can see flight ready here. If you've bound a key for flight ready, then use that. Otherwise, just select flight ready and left click. Now, if you don't take your ship off the pad um, after a certain amount of time, it will automatically get put back into storage. Um, so I'm going to lift off by holding space. Once you've taken off, you can retract your landing gear by pressing N. Basically, pressing N will go into landing mode if you're not in landing mode. And if you are in landing mode, it will retract your landing gear. And then you're free to fly around with the standard controls. W, obviously, go forward. So if you want to land at a station, if you want to change your ship, if you want to refuel and repair or whatever, what you want to do is you want to press F1 
because you need to request landings now. And you want to click on this little people button. And then you want to click on Port Olisar Landing Services. And basically what that will do is request a landing pad for you. Um, you'll then, if you press F1 again, you should see a pad that they want you to land at when you get closer. And you'll see a signed landing pad with the little beamy poly hub thing up. And you can literally just fly over to that. You can land manually if you want, or you can hold N and it will automatically land you. Nice and simple. I'm not going to do that. No, 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 let me out. Let me out. So the idea there is if I left my ship, it would put it back into storage there. And because ships are persistent, I can only buy and sell cargo and commodities on ships that are actually persist in that location. So if I was at Grimhex but didn't have my Cutlass Black with me, I couldn't buy cargo for the Cutlass Black, nor could I sell it there. So what can we do in space? What are the game loops? Well, there's missions, there's cargo, and there's some cool exploration-y stuff. So let's jump into the Moby Glass and let's show you how to navigate around the verse to start with. Bring up the Moby Glass, then click on this little button in the middle. That's the star map. So some some ships have a star map that you can literally um, use by holding F uh, and then fiddling around with, or you can just open it up on your Moby Glass instead. Um, and what you do is you can mouse wheel out while in the Moby Glass and you can select your destination. Now we're at Port Olisar currently. We can select a destination. We do need to have a clear line of sight to it. Otherwise we'll have to go to another destination first. And once we're at the major, like, planetary or moon or astral body at a location we can then go to some sub locations and you'll notice like when you have a mission there may be a point targeted around Daymar but not Daymar itself so if we go into Daymar we can see that there's Kovalex shipping hub that we can then go to but um, it's recommended as you can see here there's a red line that we'd have to go to Daymar first and then to Kovalex mission hub so let's go ahead and go to Daymar we click on Daymar and then we click set destination simple as that then we can actually see the destination appear in front of us and then we'd hover over it and then hold B. Now activate our quantum drive. We do need quantum fuel, so just bear that in mind. Um, so that's one of the reasons you'd want to go and refuel your ship at a Cry Astro service. And when you'll buy a Cry Astro service, this is a good one actually to, to remember, press F1 again and then literally on your Moby Glass, there is a Cry Astro service um, services that you will then click on what you want um, service-wise, whether you want repair, restock, um, fuel, uh, fuel ship, um, literally for the afterburner, or fuel for the quantum engine, um, or quantum fuel tanks. Now, as we can see here, we're at a, we're at a little moon, we're at Daymar. Um, we can see these little points around it, these OM points. Now these are little markers allowing you, orbital markers in fact, to quickly traverse around the moon so i can quantum travel to these points if i wish to get a better um position to move around so let's go to one of them actually um let's go to om4 so this allows me to position myself around the moon a lot better we'll have access to all of the facilities uh, marked on our hud as well now these facilities there's a couple of them, like the mining facilities, typically have landing pads where you can spawn vehicles. So you could take your ship there, you can spawn a vehicle, park that vehicle inside your ship if you wanted to, or just use that vehicle to drive around the planets. The emergency shelters are very bare bones, they're just literally just a little tiny outpost. But with all of these, there's a potential that there could be a mission there. So let's show you exactly what a mission is. Um, and how to accept them, how to get them. And let's bring up the contract manager, which is the top left Moby Glass icon. And literally a little contract there. Eventually, these will allow you to do contracts for players and stuff as well. But there's general ones and there's personal ones. So personal ones are more um, just for your character. Um, other people might be doing similar missions or the same mission, but they can't really affect you in the same way as they can't prevent you from taking the mission in the first place. Uh, general missions are missions that are um, dynamically happening. So if a Comoray gets turned off and they need to be turned back on, then you'll get a, an alert here. And you can 
take one of these missions. Once you take and complete a certain amount of missions, basically you'll generate reputation, you will then get offered missions from Miles Eckhart and Ruto, also known as the Mission Givers, and they will guide you with HUD and locations and HUD markers to exactly where they are so that you can talk to them. So don't worry about finding them. Once you have enough rep to talk to them and they offer you a mission, they will show you exactly where to go. But you take a mission, um, you can have a quick read about it, uh, and then you can accept it if you're happy to do it. Sometimes it will give you a lot of details where the location and everything is and what the mission is. Sometimes it will give you quite um, loose data, but it will still, once you take the mission, it will show in your HUD, uh, but also your star map exactly where that mission is. As you can see to the top left there, um, it has shown me where it is. I can point there. Uh, I would need to uh, mark it on my star map though, to actually go there. So then in this situation, I would um, have to go to a uh, station like Comoray, uh, 472 and then go to sell in and then go to the rec site um, but then I could complete the mission by doing whatever requirements it is. When landing on planets there's nothing particularly special you need to know um, other than I suppose afterburner. So afterburner's changed a little bit. You can hold shift now uh, and you can move around with afterburner. It will slow you down um, as you move but if you don't move around, if you go in a straight line We'll eventually go into second stage afterburner, which is effectively cruise mode that we previously had a while ago. Um, normally around uh, a thousand plus uh, meters per second. Uh, and this will allow you to very quickly get to a planet's surface from an orbital marker or from uh, straight from quantum travel. So um, there are some things you need to remember from this is that you will hit the surface very quickly if you're in stage two afterburner. So just be aware that when you're getting closer to the planet's surface, when it looks very big and very detailed, slow down. Um, I always um, go down to my normal my normal traversal speed. So literally when you think you're getting very close, just move and you'll see your um, afterburner speed rapidly drop. And then when you think you're very close within a, a few kilometers of the surface, put your landing gear out with N. That's a good kind of newbie guide to how to get to planet surfaces without exploding, ramming them, bouncing off them or whatever. But um, you don't need to really worry about anything more than that when it comes to planet surface. Obviously, there is day-night cycles. They are real, effectively. So there's admin desks and there are also these commodity kiosks that you will find in Levski, Port Olisar and Grimhax and eventually more locations as well. Now, these admin desks, you will basically bring a mission crate so you'll some missions will be bring this crate from here to these admin desks you'll literally deliver it to them there chat to the dude um, and then you'll get your reward for your mission you can also buy and sell commodities now if you go to trading and shipping here and then hold f again click left click uh, you can select one of your ships that's at the location you are at so i could for my caterpillar for example fill it through of whatever commodities here that they are selling. Um, also, I could sell any commodities that my Caterpillar had on board. Again, click on sell, select a ship that has a commodity on board, and then sell that commodity. Um, for the Caterpillar, I could go, oh, let's buy a load of, well, wastes free, apparently. Um, they want to get rid of it, that's why. But I could buy loads of quartz and hopefully sell it somewhere else for a higher price. I do suggest that you go to the other locations first to see what is a good deal. Go have a look at Levski, go have a look at Grimhex and work out what commodities are going to be worth your while transporting from one place to another. Now these commodities literally will appear, spawn in your hull once you purchase them. So if you literally drag um, this uh, little bar across and then purchase and then crates will spawn in that ship. If you lose that ship, if that ship explodes, if you um, log off, with it randomly in the verse then that cargo will effectively be lost so bear that in mind um, also when you die with cargo in your belly that cargo will erupt from you so pirates will want to go after cargo ships to blow them up and then steal their delicious delicious cargo -y loot it's good to remember though that not everything is going to be sellable at every location they're only going to buy certain things 
There's also Dumper's Depot, and obviously there's Garage Defense and all those other shops as well, Cassaba Outlet. Um, Dumper's Depot is the new one, really, though, because you can now buy ship components and weapons. So you can go in here, and I can have a look by holding F to buy anything, and I can click on Buy to have a better look at it. It tells me exactly what this component is and what it does, um, including giving me a little bit of the stats from it as well. It tells me it's military, which normally means it's pretty good, and I can purchase it if I want to, and then I can equip it on my ship. Now, how do you do that? Well, if you press F1 on the Moby Glass, you will see a Personal Manager app and a Vehicle Manager app, the PMA and the VMA. So the Personal Manager app allows you effectively to put equipment on your character. So you can click on armor here, and then every individual part of your body um, is, or slot on your body, is available to put something on. So I'm at live fire weapons. I'm going to grab uh, this bad boy, a bit of an SMG, purchase it. Probably want to purchase some ammo as well. It's always the smart move. Uh, that's for the shotgun. That, I believe, is for the custodian, which is the SMG I just bought. Let's purchase that. Exit. You do have to purchase items one at a time at the moment, which is annoying, but as I said, it's the PTU, lots and lots of stuff that they're still going to um, improve upon. Now I can click on the uh, Person Manager app, I can open Weapons, I click on Primary, I can click on that Custodian, um, and that will have equipped it now, but it hasn't saved it yet. I mean, you can do all your equipping and you can do all your stuff there, so I also want to make sure that I've equipped a magazine for it, and then I can save equipment, and I can press F1. Get out of the Moby Glass, press F4 to go into third person mode, and I can see that custodian SMG on my back. Now, again, in a very similar way, I can also customize my vehicles by clicking on this little ship icon, which is the VMA, the Vehicle Manager app. And I can go to, uh, let's go to the Caterpillar again. See, my Catless Black is lost in space because I didn't dock correctly. And then I can literally go through all of the mounts and weapons on my ship and change them to whatever I want, as long as I have those other weapons uh, in storage um, somewhere. So I can change the, the weapons or the systems or whatever I want here. So mess around with that. And once you're ready, click on Save Changes and Equip. And that will save, hopefully, um, the all changes to your ship. Press F1 again to get out of the menu. Now. VMA, PMA, stuff like that, and lots of the other systems, they are still buggy, so please bear that in mind. Stamina and oxygen is in, so you do have uh, oxygen, <laughs> which will eventually deplete. You can see your heart rate um, at the bottom left, and you can also see tank. Now, that, your heart rate, affects how quickly you consume oxygen. So if you press F1, you can see exactly how much time remaining you have in your oxygen tank. If you go to an area that has plentiful oxygen, then your tank will go to the max amount that it can have. It will basically allow oxygen into the tank. But if you're on a planet like Daymar or something, or in the vacuum of space, then you need to occasionally check to see how much oxygen you've got remaining. You might have to get back to your ship. You might have to get back to a um, an outpost or something where oxygen is available. So just bear that in mind. And the more active you are, the quicker your vitals are going to go up. If you get shot at, if you're running in heavy armor, that sort of stuff, that is going to affect your heart rate and therefore consume oxygen significantly quicker and reduce this hour and 24 minutes much quicker than it would otherwise. And because stamina is in, if I get my heart rate really high and I'm out of breath, when I try and aim, you see my heart rate actually goes alert and I can pass out by doing too many stupid things. So I was doing lots of squats there and eventually I passed out. Now sometimes the game will prevent you from doing something that will make you pass out or something that's taking too much of your energy. So like if I was trying to vault over something or jump over something, it would go, nope, I'm not going to do that. My heart rate's too high. I'm out of air. Um, I, d I don't want to do that. You'll have to rest for a second. But if you rest, your heart rate will go back down, which is good. But if I tried to aim a gun, or if I tried to do something, I might not be particularly effective at it. And there's going to be lots more kickback on my gun. It's going to be much harder to aim when my vitals are too high and I'm out of breath. Remember as well, this is the PTU. It doesn't matter if you die, really. It doesn't matter if you lose your ships. You can just always claim them back. It is for testing. Mess around work stuff out, try and bug things out, ram things, 
be a bit silly. There is going to be turrets at some of these outposts. They get uh, enabled and disabled occasionally, um, which will automatically shoot at troublemakers. Uh, try not to troll anyone. Try not to ram them on landing pads because, you know, that's a dick move. There are also random encounters that can occur while you're in quantum travel. Basically, quantum disruption is now a thing and NPCs can effectively pull you out when you are trying to mind your own business and do a mission objective or just traveling back to Port Olisar pretty much at any time. So you get pulled out, you'll have to fight them or get away or move away from the area and then go back into quantum travel. That just adds a bit of spice to the game so just bear in mind that that does happen now i hope that tutorial was informative and helped you get started there are additional tutorials that are official on the star citizen webpage i will put them down in the comments and the description there too also if you're looking for ways to increase performance and other troubleshooting help and that sort of stuff because star citizen is an alpha and can be quite buggy i'll put lots of links to troubleshooting and performance guides and all that sort of jazz down below as well make sure you get involved with spectrum which is basically robert's Space Industries and Star Citizens forums. They allow you to give feedback on the game and get involved with the development of the game. That is what we are supposed to be doing while playing the Alpha at the moment. It is not a sit down and play game that you play with your friends really, but more of a project that you're helping kind of guide expect something more akin to a beta, uh, something that you would be able to play with a load of people really easily, sort of mid-2020 sort of time, is a realistic time frame for this game to be a sit down and play fun game. If you have any other questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Like and subscribe, as well as look through my channel if you'd like to see more Star Citizen videos. They are jam-packed on there. And for those of you so inclined, there are other ways to support the channel, including Patreon and donations. Again, links below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.